So let's go back to our scenario where we're trying to read and load an instruction. So we've got the program counter at 100, taking your memory address of 100. It then passes it on to the memory address register, which is 100. It copies the value. The memory address register gives the address bus for 100. The address bus goes to the memory controller or main storage, whatever you want to call it. Then what happens is the control bus, let's add that there, goes, well, the control unit tells the control bus about the timings. The control bus carries through the timings, so it helps manage the system. Based on the timings which the control bus gives, the memory controller, or the main storage, sends now back into our CPU the contents, the data of what's been fetched, which will be LDA hash one. So let me just say that again. The control bus is a timing. The control bus will say, send it now. The memory controller will be like, OK. So let's go to address 100. Address 100. Let's see what's inside. Ah, it's LDA1. That's going to be a hashtag. Let's send that back to the CPU. Now it sends it back using another bus. The data bus, which we'll talk about in a second. The data bus carries the LDA hashtag one, but it needs to put it somewhere. So we need another register. Now this register is called the MDR, memory data register. We're not storing an address, we're storing the data. Now, this data will not be written in assembly machine code. We're using this because it's quite easy to write down and understand when you do the machine language, it'll make it easy. Normally it'll be zero, 01, it'll be in its binary counterparts, which will be way too big to put into this box for now. So MDR will store the contents, and it's because of a data bus which carries it to the MDR from the memory controller. Let's have a look at the data bus. 